Um, thank you very much for coming to my presentation today. Uh, I'm going to talk about building the contract for us of the modern watch. Well, what is this? So, um, the term something first is it's not new there. It's, uh, building a mobile first web application, which is pretty common now, doing container first deployments, also pretty popular now. But what are container first workshops? So I will try to uh, yeah, share some ideas in this presentation. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see where we go. Okay, about me, I'm Alexander Winters. I'm a project engineer with Confluent. I work as project lead to the OpenB project. And I'm uh, working a lot of projects with the Boston's. So um, for, for this presentation, I think it's important to know that I work with TGrid as um, as a blockchain, as well as I'm in um, terms match to the SDK. So where the contracts and the chain into that. Um, but yeah, how, how does contract first go? And why? So I would like to start with this. Uh, Um, yeah, I don't need to pitch contracts to you um, this conference, but I'd like to highlight one specific feature that comes with contracts, which is pretty awesome, which is migration. Migration allows you to do a zero downtime upgrade of your contract. You can replace code on the fly without any ops involved. For downtime, you no know, hassle for validators, it just keeps on doing it. And that is something that is pretty common to web applications, for example. If you run web application, there are tools and systems that support this. This is in containerized environments, it's standard to just replace it, and it works. There is, of course, more built on top of this, but it's not common to blockchains. People don't have it. But with Cosmo Wolfen, it's there, but yeah, it's, it's not available to the new a blockchain. So you um, look. It's to make that happen. And so um, when you think about that a bit more, so you, you have your development cycle for your blockchain. It takes weeks to go, weeks for governance proposal, then you should be able to, and it's some, someone upgrade for this context. This can be done within yeah, minutes, hours, depends on your process, but it's doable. It's, it's, you're flexible. And it's just some room for errors, something that, that is not available to you if you do it with your Just playing your phone start contract, you can migrate, you can upgrade it. And you have your problem. This is quite handy, especially if you build something new, something that wasn't there before, and um, like we did with T-Grade. In T-Grade, we replaced the second module, the distribution module, the governance module with something different, with contracts. Because of primates are different, and we have to build it. We have the point where we had to make a decision, build it in Europe, that's it, how everybody does it, or just make use of our technology and make use of migrations. And we knew already, okay, this is something completely new, we will have bugs. And um, to bring us in a better position, we decided to use contracts for them, and beside the benefits of small units and, and things that count as a contract. It's a flexibility, flexibility to replay things on the fly. And if you think about this longer, then you may realize at some point you have a very powerful tool. So migrations on one end, but you have chain as well. So it's not that you just hosting contracts. It can be contracts can be essential part of your blockchain. So you are basically an We're basically um, an infrastructure provider. So you listen, in an infrastructure provider, you have a lot of power. So you are Kubernetes. You're not building a Docker container. You are hosting. You are, yeah, the different things is you have not building, you're not building, uh, running an app on, on EC2. You are building AWS. So and with that power, you can do anything. Right? You can do whatever makes sense, integrate really deep 
contracts into your blockchain code and the other way around. And that's something that was team made. That worked. And I'd like to share some of the um, things on our way. Um, there are several things that were building blocks. So this wasn't possible from the beginning. Um, in 21, so I um, we discussed this, this idea in town here and then I, I did a spike. Just a very simple drone job that received to an end block callback and did the same. One so you got to register as a callback for a callback and then you this. But not everything worked out of the box with that. I mean, this inspired some, some changes to the Russian Russian code that is now available to everyone. And it's um, very important. So building blocks for yeah, contracts as, as part of the chain um, are stable in the of something. One was, um, you know, ETA was shipped in 21. It's stable since then. There have been many pros, um, Cosmos SDK releases since then, but the API is stable. All the yeah, different changes, the, um, the upgrades were managed with some wasn't the as uh, the module. And uh, for a contract developer, this gives you a lot of um, yeah, strengths to just focus on, on your logic, but not deal with all the upgrade testing. That's what for we do, and what we do, and I can tell it's not always easy. Um, yeah, and it's another building block here um, is the performance. Yeah, so, with um, wasn't contracts, you have there's roughly three times slower than, than if you do the same at all. We needed some, some benchmarks before, and uh, that was just some, some number that came out of it. And um, that's not exactly the uh, best performance, but it's a good enough performance. It's good enough to just don't take this as an argument to not build it. One, um, one thing to speed up the process even more is caching. Caching is built into Cosmos Wasm, but um, so that the, the contracts are not loaded from this every time. But some contracts you want to have rather um, um, set into your, your cache all the time. So these contracts we call them things contract, it's a function that you can call and um, you build your logic into a contract and you want that to be executed fast. And so uh, therefore any was introduced after some um, as well as um, some other things. I mentioned migration and uh, reply message and uh, the reply feature when you send a sub message, you can in the contract then receive the response and handle it. That was also not there in the beginning. It's something that was necessary for the chrome job, for example. If you trigger a message in the second contract and that fails, you don't want to revert all state, you also handle it. And this is um, something that also most companies can do. You can make the decision to open the whole transaction now or just parts of it by delegating to uh, This is pretty handy and, uh, and useful. Um, today, in Sun's presentation, I learned some uncertainty. Blockchains are using Cosmos Wasm already. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Um, we have a very rich set of tests in our project. So um, we do a lot to, to have our path covered. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty stable, pretty well tested, and they were always fun as well. So, good choice for them, pretty good as an option. And, um, but when we built it, wasn't we built already with, with key grade code, we, we scratched wasn't quite a lot. So, we, have, we needed things to, to happen there that um, were not possible with, with vanilla. Um, also, this, so there are like extension points. There are a lot of extension points. They are probably not very obvious to everybody unless you need them. So I would recommend just looking at the keeper and there's the option for another type. So that contains a lot of good things. I'll have to slide about that. Let's see how far we get today. Um, and the Sulu form. Yeah, Sulu is, is very important in this picture. Um, so it gives you privilege access to a contract. It's an entry point, exactly as executed in the bottom of the contract. But you can be sure that it comes from the chain directly. It does not come from external. Yeah, so there is no transaction triggered by a user that triggers this operation. Now it's 
comes from some Go module. And this Go module was trusted before, it was integrated into the chain, therefore it comes with some guarantees that you can build upon in your contract. So it means you don't have to do authorization for example. And um, this is also something very nice, and especially if you build logic into contracts now and not just Go, you want to use sort of sudo sets messages, and so um, we are there again with, with API stability. Yeah, so pretty important that you make sure that these things are coverable. Yeah, they are stable for the use and so on. And therefore, it's best if you go on, on both sides. It, it, it's easy if you want to do a Go module and infuse causal wasn't just for callbacks and so on to, to jump on Sudo. But if you only own one side of it, then it's pretty hard to do many upgrades in the future because you don't know your, your constraints. That's a pretty yeah, hard thing. Therefore, best use case by I've seen so far is by when I mean, you really own both sides so that you can iterate in both sides and make things better. Um, I know. When I mentioned um, not fall from external, that's not an issue anymore because we have a governance proposal that can be enabled, and this is more or less a fallback. Yeah, fallback scenario that, that you can run a sudo for whatever reasons, but it's done by a sudo, and it's uh, also yeah something that, that just may help in some situation. Yeah, it's, it's not the default. Um, sudo does require you to take care of errors. Errors, panics, whatever happens there, you need to, to, to take care of it. It's called from the Google module, and therefore you need to patch the store, for example, the, um, so that you are able to refer to this in this case and, and so on. If you don't do that, panics will go through, maybe in the end blocker, your, your chain will die on that. So, nothing great. Um, extension marks, I, I roughly mentioned, of keeper. You know, keeper options are something to look at. Um, there you can replace the defaults. We have a lot of good defaults, so if they came up from a lot of experience, but there are use cases where they are not fitting your, your purpose. And um, integrate, for example, when we have a real deep chain integration where you call from the uh, chain pool into the contract and back, so to, to execute something very special. You have custom messages, not one, but multiple maybe, and so you need custom handlers for that. You have probably custom queries because you will, the contracts require some, some data that isn't available by forming vanilla, it uh, wasn't the or the SDK or the support, so you, you need some integration points, and they are what? So, um, to make things extended. You also have the option to store data within the contract with. So with um, T grade, we have the concept of privileged contracts, I talk about this a bit later, but you want to store some uh, some permissions, for example. Yeah, so that this contract is allowed to do this or that. And um, contract info is something that can be used for that as well. And the good thing about this, when you query it from the CLI, then the data is there too. So it's another nice extension point that's probably not used a lot. Hmm. Well, I've talked about all good things in the contracts, but there are of course limits. Yeah, so the size limit, very hard limit, um, before 800, and if you want to be compatible with other chains, you probably want to stick with that limit. So this forces you to rethink the contracts you write. You, you do more delegation, you know, separate into domains probably, you have a contract that orchestrates probably things, and then sends out messages, receives them, handles them, and so on. Yeah, it's a lot of complexity that comes with that. I mean, the complexity was there before, was just in the old code, but now it's a bit more distributed between contracts, and that's not an easy thing to, to do. Therefore, I guess a lot of testing is the thin code. Really brings so much at the In T-Rate, we, as I said, we placed staking module and other modules, and we ended up with five to seven contracts doing what staging model does, which in the end had some complexity in the bootstrapping contracts to launch them on the chain. It wasn't a simple CLI command you could run anymore because 
had to instantiate contract one before contract B, which then has some data that passed contract three, and so on and so on. There were some dependencies that yeah, popped up that didn't work with the original model that we had built into wasn't. So in, in OpenD, there was um, there's the genesis messages. So there, there was the idea you have a genesis file where you can just put some messages there that would then be executed when the chain starts. But this, com this complexity was just too much. So you would need the, the contract address, for example, from first call um, to instantiate the second contract. And therefore, it took a while, but the solution to this was just to have a module. So we are back to go to have a module just for the bootstrapping and to cover this. And um, therefore, you can arrange things as you like. Also, you can just ship the contracts with the, um, with the binding of, of your chain. And uh, also, on the nice side, you can have CLI commands. Yeah, so, you can have nice CLI commands that vary contracts and, well, say, the right contracts. For them. And just to, to answer that, make it nicer for people to use this new environment. Um, yeah. What is deep chain integration? I mean, there are no limits. And you, you can define it yourself, but some examples here are um, to change the, uh, the data set. Something we have to do in queuing. And um, yeah, this happens in the end program. And um, the end program returns then to the SDK, the new data set. But some contracts may want to receive inflow callbacks, but not touch the um, data set. So therefore, you can split that into two separate operations. Or something that we have in mesh that is instant underlegate. So the normal underlegate period is 21 days, so default. And if you want to rearrange the delegations and so on for mesh use, then this doesn't work. There's also a hard limit of five weeks under the gates at the same time. So probably not working. But um, we made that happen just with um, um, adapter. So a lot of methods were public in the SDK, the Cosmos SDK, so therefore it right, shows its own custom message that the contract can emit. It's handled with the custom message handler, and then it calls into the decorator. Osmosis has this in their fork of the system under the gate in their fork of the SDK. So it was all well done there, and we just ported that to make it work with, um, with just vanilla SDK. So the mesh security SDK contains that. Also, examples how messages could look like messages that contracts emit because um, it would be good to have some namespace. There can be other custom messages as well, so there can be conflicts. And there are some lot of good practices that we applied from Infobonic for different projects. So when you want to get up to speed on, on deep integration of so the mesh security is the pair of this in it already, although it's early stage. Um, yeah, more examples, I would recommend just look into the t wasm module that is part of the project. <laughs> contains a lot of permissions that are, yeah, nice, very useful for us. And so, um, so I think if you want to take one thing with you, then if there's a Go module, there can be a pseudo code. Yeah, remember that? So there, there are a lot of opportunities. And contracts with their fast development and release cycle, they can really push innovation. Yeah, so it's a very different model than um, and working with just Go. But contracts are not equal. Some contracts are better. Your contracts are better. Because you have built them for the specific purpose to do well. So in my example, this first part was a cron. The cron, you don't want any contract to just um, any contract to just be able to receive an end block call. That's a pretty dangerous thing. Um, so you want to, to separate this to some specific contracts only and um, to have a name we call them privileged contracts inspired by Docker, they are privileged containers with more permissions. So it's very similar with, with all privileged contracts. And um, so they have a slightly different life cycle as normal contracts. So you store code, you instantiate, but privileged contracts are promoted. So they, they get this they call it being promoted, then they can return oh, to a uh, provision yeah, that they like to have. And then 
Well, um, in total, there's also an email, email government's proposal to just um, do the OEC. On migration, we can also change permissions, and um, that was also invented to the Yes. The concept of privilege contract wasn't there from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's like they're very. Turns out yeah, that we have to handle them. Next to the way on school, but a bit. Could you just have to remind me about the site? What are the permissions this contract gets? Yeah. Because we did it's not know that yet at the uh, time. But yeah. doing the opposite, the contract asks for the permission, yeah. and we can't give it to you. Yeah. That's um, a very nice thing to do because then it's separated, you're flexible, and it worked out. We get it for us. Question is, of course, pencils will be your use. But there's a government's potential for you to get that through, yeah, other things, yeah, but also yeah. pretty warm. So, government does matter, and yeah, um, yeah this is also something that I would say that it's fixed, yeah, more than I would say, correct? Yeah. I copied some of the, the, the issues we received from the uh, yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. into the slide. Errors, 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 errors. It's, a, it's, a, it's a nightmare for contract developers currently. And um, if you think about this, I mean, it's one contract, you have two, more, if you have three, five, if you have replaced the modules with contracts that interact, and so we have yeah. um, 20 sub messages in your end block. If one of them would go wrong, oh. sorry. I need to look behind the schedule. Then you have 20, um, yeah. It, it's a nightmare to find out what caused the issue. Um, yeah, so I, while we worked on, on Tibet, um, I did not the tracing mode. I, it's um, not an additional that has a uh, function just to capture data. So we yeah, have a good like overview of what happens on these callbacks, but it's not done. So it's in development, but. Um, Happy to talk about this later if um, somebody wants to go. So I'm around today, I'm around tomorrow, I'm at Oops later. Um, let me uh, how, how get there. I think this is something I, I like to say. It comes you, there are a lot of smart people, and if you really want to iterate fast and um, get a lot of look into the whole code and uh, we integrate early, we um, build tests on the uh, iteration points, we do a lot of testing and that's a nice slide. And I'm really sorry that I could not talk about that one, but maybe uh, yeah. different session. Anyway, um, what comes next? Of course, the future is amazing. Um, there's a talk presentation about so, I was in the future. I sign on you. Um, we will talk more about that. And uh, it's a good time, just get started, join um, join the conversation there too, so that you get your features in there as well. And um, so that we have a long living too as well, so with stability. Um, yeah, I mentioned um, tracing mode, so there's a framework, of course, and the last point is about you, and if everyone who listens as well to this talk, there can be better chains. Move your logic into contracts, have a deep chain integration, and then, um, yeah, iterate fast, build something amazing, and um, make the best of possible of that. Um, last sentence from my side is big thanks and shout out to other people that worked on the project. This all would not have been possible with um, amazing work from Ethan, from Pino, from Mauro, from mm -hmm. Simon, Bart, and others from here. So I'm very thankful to work with these people, and it was an amazing job. Thanks a lot, and I'm around, and yeah, please reach out if you want to hear more. Thanks.